anyway, so so here's a quick list uh, of all the ways we saw this election stolen. Let's start with the, the most obvious one, the most spectacular one. The exit polls did not match up to the voting machine results in many of the primaries, all right? And this is o only true on the Democratic side. So if you want to say it's just because exit polls are a bunch of crap, you know, that then that doesn't explain why they do match up on the Republican side. Plus, why would CNN or the other outlets ever mention exit polls if they're just way off? Why, they, so, so when, anyway, that started happening. When that started happening in the primaries, I created the hashtag exit poll gate on Twitter. It started trending on Twitter and it became a story. And besides uh, getting a really pathetic article in the Washington Post website and one on New York Times website, it was basically never addressed by the mainstream media. And think about the stuff the mainstream media will address. They'll address rumors about Kanye West, bliggity blah, 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 but they won't mention the theft of our democracy. You want more? I've got more. There was a Stanford paper that also showed the exit polls did not match up. Then there was a second Stanford paper that did not use exit polls. They said, okay, guys, you, you think exit polls don't matter. Let's try pre-election polls. And they found that pre-election polls were way off only on the Democratic side and only in states with electronic voting machines with no paper trail. Do you follow me? Hillary did way better than expected in states with hackable voting machines and no way to verify them. You want more? I got more. There was another article in Counterpunch showing Hillary did best in areas where voting machines flunked hacking tests. You want more? I got more. In Arizona, the polling places were suddenly cut drastically, causing people to wait in line for hours, mainly in areas that were more likely to support Bernie Sanders. Same thing happened in, in Puerto Rico, which isn't even a state. I mean, it's not, haven't they suffered enough? They're not a state, and now you gotta rig their election on top of that? You want more? I got more. In Brooklyn, New York, over 120,000 voters were kicked off the rolls. Just in Brooklyn. It turns out it was done by a woman named Diane Hazlett Rudiano, who was soon after fired for doing it. So, so she was fired because they said she has done wrong. She owned a rat-infested, dilapidated brownstone that no one lived in near Central Park. An absolute disaster of a property. It was bought for $6 million, way over market value, by the daughter of a hardcore Clinton superdelegate a year before the primaries began. Isn't that interesting? You want more? I got more. But you gotta really, you gotta really want it, because this stuff is gnarly. In Chicago, multiple witnesses at the voting machine audit said the machines were overcounting for Hillary, but the auditors were lying to make the numbers fit. They were changing the tallies to ensure that they fit. When they brought this info to the Chicago Board of Elections, the Chicago Board of Elections acted like someone they didn't know had just asked them to help them move. And they were like, oh, God, what? I don't, I don't leave, leave me alone. Come on. That's how they responded to fucking election fraud. You want more? I got more. In California, the poll workers were instructed to give out provisional ballots, provisional ballots, like they were free condoms at a high school prom. They were just like, hey, you take one, you take it. Hey, just reach into the bowl, grab as many as you want. Provisional ballots are placebo ballots, according to Greg Pallast, investigative journalist. They might as well, uh, you know, say on the placebo ballots, thanks for playing, maybe next time. Because most of the time, uh, provisional ballots are not counted. And when they are, it's way after the election anyway. So even if it came out right now that Bernie won California, it's too late. People would ignore it. It wouldn't matter. So the placebo ballots did their job perfectly. You want more? I got more. There's something called fractional votes in the, the code, the coding 
for some of our voting machines. The ballots have a fractional number rather than just a simple one or a zero. So if a, a ballot counts as, say, 1.0, then someone could put in the code that a Bernie vote counts for 0.9 and a Hillary vote counts for 1.1. But there's a way to show that that is happening in certain areas of the country. This is the vote share. This chart shows the vote share for Clinton versus Sanders in Jefferson County, Alabama. Those two lines should not smoothly grow apart like that unless there is election fraud. What this chart shows is that the more people vote, the more Clinton's lead over Sanders grows at a very smooth rate. Only one thing can really make that chart look like that. It's fractional voting in which Clinton gains a percentage of a vote each time. So, so the more people vote, the more her lead grows. Doug Johnson Hatlam uh, says in the article containing that chart, he says, these statistical arguments are completely independent of, but reinforce the exit polling argument. It's quite the hat trick. Actually hackable voting machines, wildly wrong exit polls and a Clinton vote share that smoothly increases in keeping with the total votes by precinct size. It's a hat trick now, uh, now demonstrable in, in a dozen states or more. Quite the hat trick. Congratulations, Mrs. Clinton. You pulled off quite the victory. Too bad it didn't come from more people voting for you. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure winning is fun. I imagine. I imagine you're having a blast right now. You know, champagne all around. Hillary Clinton, you won. It's got to be. It's got to be a lot of fun. But you know what would be even more fun? Winning by getting more people to vote for you. That would have been, like, just super awesome for you. But you won't get to know what that feels like because you didn't do it. Plus, I don't even have time to really get into uh, the media coverage, which we saw that 23 times as much coverage was given to Trump and uh, uh, al almost as much, 10 or 15 times as much uh, for Hillary as for Bernie Sanders. So that's another way this election is rigged. There's the Guccifer 2.0 leaks showing collusion between the DNC and the Hillary campaign. Basically, the Democratic National Com Committee Admit, admitted in internal email, so not publicly, but admitted that they were colluding with the Clinton campaign. They wanted Clinton to be the nominee. And then I don't have time to get into the Google, manip Google, the Google, Google manipulating searches to help the Hillary campaign. So as you can see, on many levels, this election was absolutely rigged. That doesn't mean Hillary wouldn't have won a fair election. It just means this was not a fair election.